Today's case covers a statue that I honestly have never heard of before, which is, well, pretty sad because it's been on the books for at least four years. I have no idea how I missed it. Surprisingly, it's not a gender neutral statue. Mom can use it on dad to terminate his rights in a custody case, but not vice versa. Now, this isn't clickbait. This isn't me making a statistically improbable extrapolation. This isn't a wardship JV or adoption matter. We're talking actual termination in a divorce or parentage proceeding. More surprising, it doesn't even require criminal charges to attach, doesn't require that mom file for an order of protection, or even seek a finding of endangerment. Hopefully I have your attention. Stay with me to the end of the video because fathers in Illinois, well, now you have another reason to keep your radar up, especially if you are in a high conflict case. Today's case deals with a cussy fight that well, kind of broke bad, like termination of parental rights bad. Now, it's not clear from the opinion what the nature of mom's problems were, but it appears after the child was born, DCFS got involved. Mom at some point lets the child stay with the paternal grandparents. Now, both parents of the child, they're pretty young. Dad's 19 and mom was 16 when she gave birth. And this is going to be very important in a few seconds. Years later, dad files for custody. Mom objects and says he can never have custody or visitation ever since the statute bars it. And even though she's allowed him to have time with the child in the past, the law gives her the unilateral right to forever revoke it. Well, how is this possible? She cites section 622 of the Parentage Act. 622 is broken down into two categories. The first prohibits rapists, pedophiles, etc., from having custody, visitation, or the right of heirship, basically a termination, except you still have to pay your child support. But wait, Dad was never charged with a crime, so what gives here? Well, that's the second section of 622. Subparagraph A2 allows the judge to make a civil finding that a crime was likely committed even if the state never pressed charges. The age of consent is 16 in Illinois. It appears mom was 15 when the child was conceived, and statutory rape is one of the enumerated offenses that bar you from having any rights. Here, math is math, and the court's hands were tied. Clearly, it happened, and the appellate court affirms that as a result, Dad is forever erased at mom's election. Now, normally this would be the end of my commentary, but I have a slew of problems with the statute. Now, I don't have an issue when it comes to a criminal conviction because there's already a statutory system in place for that. We terminate parental rights all the time for people convicted of rape, molestation, you name it. What every father should have a heart attack over is that section regarding civil findings. In my mind, it's an end around of the current process. You know, in a criminal case, you get to plead the fifth and no one can force you to testify against yourself. The standard of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're convicted, then the state can file a petition to terminate your rights, but even then, you get a two-part civil hearing under the Juvenile Act. Part one, the state must show through clear and convincing evidence that the parent is unfit. A rape conviction is probably an account. Step two, the state has to show by a preponderance of the evidence that's still in the best interest of the child to forever sever dad's rights. Once those rights are terminated, the parent can't get visitation or custody or heirship. So why pass a statute to a problem that doesn't exist? The ISBA passed it because in doing so, Illinois gets federal dollars. So this is not a conspiracy theory. It's right here in the opinion. So why do I have a problem with this? My beef is, what's to stop someone from accusing dad of rape to avoid a lengthy custody fight? You know, with criminal charges, the state at least vets what cases to prosecute. And generally, they do a pretty good job weeding out the head cases and liars. But here, there's no vetting process. Mom can raise it, and there's nothing to stop her from advancing it. And there's other issues I have a problem with, such as where's appointed counsel? This statute is a de facto termination of parental rights. If we drag you to criminal court, if we drag you to juvenile court, you have the right, the God-given right to counsel under both statutes. But I don't see any mention of that here. If you're still not convinced this is a problem, think about this. Under the statute, women can bring this against men, but not the other way around. Is it because women can never, ever be convicted of sexual assault on a male? Is that the hill we're going to die on? If you're still not convinced, ask yourself this. Are we to believe no one is going to use a statute for an improper purpose? You know, a few months ago, I had to cross-examine a nine-year-old child who claimed my client, the parent, raped them. The ex and their family were all swearing up and down that this was true, except it wasn't. And it was only by the grace of God that on cross, the entire story fell apart. But the next dad, well, he may not be so lucky. 
you know, maybe he can't even afford an attorney because unlike criminal court, adoption court, or juvenile court, there's no clear right to counsel under the statute. Maybe mom cries rape because she's a head case, or maybe she's just evil and just wants her child support and doesn't want to deal with the trouble of having the child see dad anymore. You know, father's rights groups have lobbed all sorts of tinfoil hat conspiracy theories at us for years. Most of their theories are the work of poorly written espionage novels, but here, you know, if any of them were ever to get their act together, this statute seems to be low-hanging fruit for them to score points off us all day long. And I'm not seeing any justification for it except money. And that right there should tell you something is wrong. All right, now I'm off my soapbox. That's all I have. Thanks for watching.